real food, isn't it? That's right. This happens to be nature's greatest gift. Douglas Turnbull, the innovative master of special effects, who created the world of 1982's Blade Runner. Effects on Stanley Kubrick's masterful 1962's 2001 A Space Odyssey. 1979's Close Encounters of the Third Kind, just to name a few. Made his directorial debut with this 1972 environmental themed science fiction movie. Silent Running is set in the far future where all plant life on Earth has become extinct. Where humanity has preserved specimens in enormous greenhouse domes attached to cargo spaceships stationed outside the orbit of Saturn. Bruce Dern plays Freeman Laurel, an obsessive biologist and ecologist. Hey, now what's a big deal? I can't see the difference between that and this anyway. You don't see the difference? The difference is that I grew it. That's what the difference is. On one of the cargo ships, the Valley Forge. I suppose today he would be called an activist. The other three crew members are the complete opposite. The apathy, if you like, of humanity that can't see past their own ignorance. Hence their reaction to the news that the domes are to be destroyed and the freighters return to commercial use. This is it! We're going home! Uh, I can't believe it! I told you, I told you what I said. You just huh? pack up those domes and go home. Destructive all forest units. Kiss them goodbye. After watching the destruction of the domes, Lowell makes a stand no. and refuses to let Crewman Wolf plant the nuclear charges, which results in a deadly confrontation where Wolf is killed and Lowell is seriously injured. Lowell kills the remaining crewman by jettisoning and triggering the destruction of the remaining dome. Before affecting his plan of escape, Lowell reprograms the service robots to help him perform surgery on his injured leg. You'll perform the operation. I'm drone number three. You'll handle the oxygen anesthesia. And he fakes the Valley Forge's destruction by sending it through the rings of Saturn. Unfortunately, resulting in the destruction of one of the service robots which Lowell dubs Louie and renames the other two Huey and Dewey a nod to the nephews of Donald Duck due to his deep feelings of guilt I, do, I don't think that I'll ever be able to excuse what it is that I did Lowell instructs Huey and Dewey to bury Wolf and afterwards, life aboard the Valley Forge goes on. Lowell reprograms Huey and Dewey on how to tend the forest and how to play poker on his downtime, which they cheat. To Lowell, they become his crew, his friends. However, life aboard slowly sours lowering Lowell's mood. I know. I've actually been eating that crap. Coupled with a major problem with the forest's foliage, resulting in an accidental collision with Dewey as Lowell is recklessly driving towards the dome. Unable to fix Huey to the standard needed to perform its tasks. In a touching scene where Dewey refuses to leave Huey's side during the repairs. Lowell is left with only himself and Dewey to attend the forest. Sometime later, the Berkshire, another space freighter, makes contact. Please transmit immediately. Berkshire to Valley Forge, Berkshire to Valley Forge. How about a word, Lowell, huh? And Lowell 
knows that his crimes will be discovered. I just can't do it anymore. You see, things are... And his forest will be destroyed. So, before the Berkshire can intercept, he jettisons the dome with Dewey on board. Take care of yourself, Dewey. And destroys the Valley Forge, the damaged Huey and himself in the process. As the brightly lit dome hercules into deep space, Dewey is now the sole guardian of Earth's greenery. For his directoring debut, Turnbull produced a solid entertaining movie on a micro budget of around one and a quarter million dollars, which was stretched on the screen to every penny. <laughs> A decommissioned aircraft carrier was dressed up for the interior, giving the movie a scope needed to portray a huge space freighter. One model was doubled as the rest of the fleet, and perhaps the most effective and genius idea, the drones were played by bilateral amputees. Looking back over the 40 years, this movie's ecological theme seems to be ahead of its time, if the state of the Earth's climate is anything to go by. Unlike modern woke hacks, the writers of Silent Running managed to layer the ecological themes inside a tight, competent script that manages to entertain as well as be thought-provoking. If you like the content, please subscribe, hit the like button and notification bell for new content. From now on, drone number two, you will answer to the name of Huey. And drone number one, you will answer to the name of Dewey. <laughs>